Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Thursday, which means it's Booklist Thursday. And it, Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book. Thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. So for the rest of the month of May, we are going to make it Booklist Thursday's month of must reads, basically. So we're gonna give you all kinds of books that we highly, highly recommend and say that you need to pick them up you know, like all month long. So sorry, not sorry for the pocketbook, but here we go. And Skylar's here too. Even she agrees. Must read books, right bud? Right. All right. So today um, we're going to focus on book of the month books. So if you are not a member of book of the month yet, what are you waiting for? The code's below. Your first month is, I want to say $9.99. Um, and then it's $14.99 every month afterwards. Um, and that monthly fee gets you one credit to pick from a variety of books that they release. Every month they have between five and seven books that you can pick from, plus some bonus additional add-ons, plus whatever they have available from previous months um, is there for, for you to pick for $14.99. You get a beautiful hardcover book. Like, there's no better deal. Um, and they've been knocking it out of the park for a long time. So I have five books that are book of the month books that I highly suggest. Now, if you're not a big fan of this idea of book of the month, these are all books that are available either at your independent bookstore, at your library, probably on Audible. I mean, you can find them anywhere, but we're, this is just our prompt for today. So here we go. Here we go. Where do I want to start? I'll just pick one. Okay. First one, Alice Feeney, <laughs> Rock, Paper, Scissors. This is my first Alice Feeney book that I read and definitely not my last. I've already read another. I've got another on the docket. It's happening. Um, so this one is written so uniquely. So we have this interesting timeline and then these anniversaries. And so we follow this couple, Mr. and Mrs. Wright. It seems like they have everything right until it looks like it's wrong. <laughs> Every anniversary, they exchange the traditional gifts. So paper, cotton, pottery, tin. And then each of the chapters talks about what anniversary it is and what corresponds with it. So this one's rock. Um, so you, each year, Adam's wife writes a letter, um, but she never lets him read it or never lets him see it. And kind of, it kind of talks about how that year of their marriage has gone. Um, so the couple win a weekend away in Scotland at a very remote kind of Airbnb off to themselves. And they're thinking this might be exactly what I need to kind of try to rescue this marriage. It's kind of going to make or break their relationship, honestly. Um, and they they appear to be working on it, but one of them doesn't necessarily want them to live happily ever after. Um, so there is, when they get to this remote location, there is definitely some creepiness happening, um, but you're not really sure where it's coming from. So really good book. I flew through this thing so fast. I like how it was put together. I thought it was unique. Absolutely. I highly recommend. Next one I want to talk about. This one is going to be a bit heavy, but such a good read. So this is Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. So this follows a family of three. We have mom, dad, and their daughter. And our father, Ernt, I forgot his name, um, fought in the Vietnam War and is home and is suffering from some pretty severe PTSD. But yet at this time, because this is, I would consider this historical fiction, we're in the 70s. Um, and I know some people don't think that's historical fiction, but we can fight about it. It's 30 years ago, friends. No, 50 years ago, friends. Oh my gosh, I can't do math. Um, so we're in the 70s. And so PTSD and the treatment of that is not necessarily something that is really readily available. And so Ernt is having some really bad nightmares and comes up with this plan that to move the entire family to Alaska is that's what they need to do and that is going to solve everything. So they move there, but they move there in the summer and everything is fantastic and wonderful for a while until winter hits and it's dark and oh, there's some battles that that all of the characters need to face. So really fantastic read. Loved every minute of it. I should, need to do a reread of this sooner than later. So highly suggest. Hi Stormy. 
All right, next one I have is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. Another fantastic read, another short book. Um, just, I, it still sits with me. So we have our main character, Cassie. Um, she's born to handle emergencies. She's one of the only female firefighters in Texas. Um, and she's been welcomed in there into that firehouse. Um, and it has a really good crew and really gets along. Until her estranged and ailing mother calls her and basically asks her to move to Boston to help care for her. And so she gives up her whole life. She moves to Boston um, and she has to somehow start to assimilate with this new firehouse um, where maybe they're not super thrilled to have a lady on their crew. And then also deal with the... That was stormy. Also deal with the relationship with her mom and why it was estranged. And is it worth it? Is there even repair involved? What does that look like? Fantastic read. Love, love, love this book as well. I kind of picked some heavy reads, guys. <laughs> Nothing too fluffy, but that's okay. Next one I have is Fountains of Silence by Rudis Sapati. So this one takes place in Spain during the Spanish Revolution. Oh, so fantastic. So we have um, our main, oh, wow. okay. Um, 1957 in Madrid, we have our General Franco. The This is a very oppressive dictator, horrible, horrible man. Um, and very, keeping Spain very oppressed and very like hidden from the world as far as what is really going on. Um, yet there are some tourists and some people allowed in. So we have a foreign businessman Sorry, tourists and foreign businessmen flood into Spain under this welcoming promise of sunshine and wine. Um, one of those people is Daniel Matheson. He's the son of an oil tycoon. He arrives in Madrid with his parents, hoping to connect with the country of his mother's birth. Um, and he ends up meeting Anna, who works at the um, hotel that they're staying at. And Anna starts kind of introducing to him, and he's an aspiring photographer, as to what what is... Spain really look like on the eve of this revolution. So fantastic read. Again, a little heavy, but really, really enjoyed it. As we all know, Ruta does her research. She's amazing. All right, last one I have is one I literally just finished the other day. All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. This book blew my mind. Um, I enjoyed her other book, Flicker in the Dark. Enjoyed it. It was it was good. I'd still suggest to read it, but I would say read this one more. I like this one more. And I feel like there's kind of a, a bit of a rift between Stacey Willingham fans. Like half of them love Flicker in the Dark and half of them love this one. So I'm kind of excited to see what else Stacey has in store for us. But this one basically finds our main character, Isabel. Her life is changed forever when her toddler son, Mason, goes missing. She wakes up one morning, his, the window in his nursery is open, and he is gone. Um, and she's been suffering through this for a year and on a very specific quest to find him um, and harboring some secrets from her past. And so when she was growing up, she was a sleepwalker, which I, t I also was a sleepwalker. I would wake up in the most random places. It was crazy. But based on her past, she has a whole lot of guilt associated with what she could or could maybe did or maybe didn't do while she was sleepwalking and so she carries that forward and we kind of question like did she do something to mason did she not how is this it's it's so good it's so good so highly recommend pick this one up do it All right, so here we go. Here are my five book of the month must reads for this month, the month of must reads. Get all of these. Um, my link for book of the month is below. If you are not a um, subscriber yet, highly suggest. Um, I do get a little bit of a reward or commission and I would appreciate that. And it helps kind of, you know, me and my book addiction with my channel. Um, so use that below. Otherwise, again, you can find these at most other book supplying places <laughs> whatever you choose um they're pretty popular so it's not like they're just exclusive for there so anyways head over to sarah's channel and see what she has picked for this month um otherwise like comment subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you next time bye